We are live Saturday morning. Woo. Surprise T3 watch rant on a Saturday morning. Typically we don't do it on Saturdays. Typically it's a Friday thing, but that's not gonna stop me from getting my opinions out here to you guys. <sighs> Feels really good today. Very, very nice morning here. Beautiful, beautiful, beautiful morning here uh, in South Pasadena. We're in South Pasadena, guys. Um, kind of a little suburb just side of Los Angeles, and it is gorgeous. Good morning, everybody. Let me look at the comments here. Next door, good morning. Caleb's here, Paul, or Pow, excuse me. Sean, Spiel, Shimron. What's going on? Urgem. Jerry is here. Good morning. Shabbat shalom. Um, first week of college. You made it, dude. You made it through the first week of college. Congratulations, man. And it only gets better from there. Texas is in the building. Germany. What's going on, Deutschland? Good morning. Ohio is here. Shashanka, shanka, shanka, duta. Good morning. I mispronounced your name, but very, very cool name. All right, guys. So I am in, honestly, this, this beautiful area that I come to almost every Saturday, every other Saturday for sure, because it's gorgeous and it's September and it's starting to feel like September. It's not too hot. It's kind of overcast because, um, again, it's, it's, it's fairly early, but... Um, yeah, the haze hasn't really burned off yet. It's gorgeous. It feels nice and cool. And um, we're standing outside of a library. What's up? Iceland is in the building. Tank is here. Mike is here. Um, Grim Reaper, what's going on? India, New York. New York City, the Big Apple. What's going on, my man? Love New York. Spent a lot of time in New York. Um, dude, it sounds like okay, we're almost at 100 people here already. Joseph Folk, what's up, man? Omar, a man Omar, what's going on, Omar? Don't forget the UK. How could I forget the UK? I'm from New England, okay? I am originally from New England. So, of course, I love England. What's going on, UK? I love you guys. Saha, I did not skip your name, dude. I'm so sorry. I did not mean to skip your name. Philly, oh my God. Yes, Philly's in the house. George from Philly. Finland. Boston, hell yes, my stomping ground. What is up, Boston? Where are you at, Boston? Tell me you're gonna spend this Saturday walking down Newbury. Oh, man, I miss Boston. Love Boston. Lee, represent Boston for me, baby. Um, Jamaica, dude, Jamaica's in the building? Heck yeah, Andrew, yo, yo, yo. Tennessee, love Tennessee. Texas, Northeast UK, London. How are you, London? Sactan, Sacramento, Saudi Arabia here. How are you? Someone says, not joking. I'm from Iceland. What's going on, Iceland? Georgia, what's going on, Georgia? Canada. Oh, man, Alabama's in the building, which means... Now that Alabama's here, it means we, we got to start, honestly. All right, guys, so I hope you're enjoying a beautiful, beautiful Saturday, whatever time it is um, where you guys are. Pittsburgh, what's going on? Malaysia, we got people in Malaysia, heck yes. Okay, well, guys, we'll check it out. I'm wearing, let me see if I can flip the camera. Oh, heck yeah. You see that? I'm wearing my tuna because it is Seiko Saturday. It is Saturday 1st, uh, the 1st of September. So I hope everybody has an amazing month and we're gonna kick it off with a little watch rant, guys. So um, as you can see, the tuna is loose on me right now. I'm gonna have to tighten it up because um, when it gets really hot out, your body swells up a little bit. And um, the thing I hate the most is when your watch gets really tight on your wrist, but it's been very cool here now. It's cooling off here now. Um, so now all my divers, let me, let me go in, um, are a little bit loose, which means, which means fall is coming guys, which means that fall, um, falls on its way. So 
let's do it this way. It is 10 a.m., 10.01. Let's get down to business. Okay, guys, so I've told the time, which means we need to talk about things now. Um, so Grand Seiko, about three days ago, Grand Seiko, a company I have so much respect for, a company I love, released a new 9F Quartz GMT. Now, that sounds like it would be very exciting. And it is. Really, 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 really um, very exciting. Someone asked me, how's that fore forehead kick healing? Um, it's actually healing quite well. Um, you can see a little bit, uh, it's not a scar. I hope, I don't think it'll scar. I got kicked in the head in jujitsu, guys. I don't know if you saw, um, made a video about it. Uh, you can see me deadlifting 500 pounds. Guys, you can see me deadlifting 500 pounds at my other channel, Time Away. Make sure to follow me over on the Time Away channel where I talk about exactly Jiu-Jitsu. Uh, I actually got my black belt during my bar mitzvah. I'm just kidding, that's a little Jewish joke. Um, I'm not a black belt, guys. Nowhere near a black belt yet. Um, but yeah, go follow me over on the Time Away channel. Uh, Campers is here, and you can see me, you know, talking about training and business and other things. Okay, so Grand Seiko. Grand Seiko. Their new... GMT 9F Quartz. What is important about this watch? Well, there's a few things that are really cool about this watch. The 9F Quartz came out in the 90s, okay? I think it was 1994. I believe someone in the comment section will um, correct me. But the 9F Quartz is really, 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 truly a high-end um, high, high quartz movement, okay? Now, this 7C46 that's in my tuna is also a really, really impressive quartz movement, but it's not as refined. It's very, very robust, very, very tough, fully serviceable, incredibly strong um, and accurate quartz movement, but it's not the 9F, okay? What makes the 9F special is they have individually picked the quartz crystals that go into uh, the 9F movement, and it becomes hyper-regulated, super, super duper accurate, incredibly refined, just a very tricked out quartz movement. So when I heard that they're making a quartz movement, uh, or when I heard they're making a new 9F GMT variant, I was very excited. And I heard all the hubbub. I love using that word hubbub. I heard all the people being like, oh, oh my God, the, the 32, uh, 3,200 euros. That's around like, what, 30, $3,700, I think, right? Almost four grand. Um, in, in U.S. currency. And people were all upset. They're like, oh my, oh my God, $4,000 for a quartz watch? Impossible! Well, it's possible, guys. Deal with it, okay? My tuna is like a $1,300 watch. So obviously Grand Seiko with the 9F movement and a GMT complication is going to be even more expensive than that. So hearing about this watch and hearing the price, that didn't bother me, okay? If I was in the market for a GMT and I wanted something like a quartz to travel with that I didn't have to worry about as far as um, regulating and moving around with it and potentially banging it up a little bit. Um, I, that money wouldn't really bother me because I understand it's a great watch. But then, but then I looked at the watch and I hate it. I hate it. I'm not gonna lie guys, I hate it. I need a sip of coffee because I'm upset. I need a sip of coffee on Saturdays. Guys, you know I drink cold brew black because men drink black coffee. If you put cream or sugar in your coffee, you're not a man. But you'll see this coffee is not black. Do you know why? Because on Saturdays, I drink Vietnamese coffee. <laughs> it's a little treat to myself. So Vietnamese coffee is pretty much the opposite of black coffee because there's a ton of sweet and condensed milk and sugar in here and it is delicious it's absolutely delicious um but yeah black coffee only every day of the week except except uh for saturdays what's up guys see everybody's just enjoying this beautiful saturday september 1st okay um men drink black coffee but on saturdays men drink vietnamese coffee okay write that down remember that success tip for the day. Um, 
So I'm upset, guys. I hate this new watch. I hate the, I hate the new Grand Seiko Quartz. Um, SoCal Entourage, I got your email. I'm going to reply. Very, very cool little diving museum there. Uh, we'll talk about it. Um, so, okay. It broke my heart to look at this new Grand Seiko, man. <laughs> um, why? Why is it? Is the price? No. We just went over the fact that the price doesn't bother me at all. Um, is it the fact that it's a quartz? No. Not at all. In fact, I love the 9F quartz watch. Uh, that doesn't bother me at all. Um, is it the fact that it's a really expensive quartz watch? No, guys, I love it. I said it a thousand times, I love it. The price doesn't bother me. The quartz movement doesn't bother me. Oh my God, it uses a battery. Okay, that doesn't bother me. <sighs> Do you know what bothers me? They made it look like a Rolex Explorer 2. What are you thinking? By the way, everybody here is just probably freaking out that I'm yelling about a watch in a park in a beautiful neighborhood. Um, but what do you think, guys? I'm, I'm going to talk a little bit more about this, but let's, let's converse in the comment section. Comment section, let me know what do you think about the design of this freaking watch. If you need to Google a reference number right now, uh, the, the standard one, because there's three, and one of them is a, a limited edition variant, is SBGN, as in Nancy, SBGN003. That's the new uh, Quartz GMT from Grand Seiko. Mr. Seven, if he says, breathe, just breathe. Thank you guys, I need to breathe. Google right now, if you can, SBGN003. Um, and... Let me know what you think. Sound off in the comment section. What do you think about the design? It is a Rolex Explorer 2. They made a Rolex Explorer 2. Why? But before I go further, comment section, let's, let's talk about it. Um, un, okay, Gitmo Holiday says, insecure men, I'm gonna try to translate this real quick. Insecure men drink black coffee to look tough. Naturally, though, men don't care what they drink. Well, that's where you're wrong. Men drink black coffee because that's what's in their veins. Real men don't have blood. They just have coffee in their veins. Come on, guys. Um, Seiko are overrated. Let the hate begin. That was Rob Smith, guys. Rob Smith just said Seiko are overrated. Blocked! I'm just kidding. I'm not blocking you. Um, Vet Virtual Max says... Indeed, looks like a Rolex Explorer. And then he also said that I'm the best. Thank you, man, you're the best. Uh, Redskins Pride says, just buy Vostok Amphibia. <sighs> Redskins, I love you, dude. I hope you find your way through this Vostok Amphibia addiction. Um, Duda says, I see why you're not impressed with the design. The bezel is a huge bummer. Exactly, that GMT bezel. It looks like it's just the Explorer. And then what, what upsets me the most is that the GMT hand, especially on the black dial variant, they made it orange with like a very similar design as the Rolex Explorer 2. Um, Amin says SBGN003. Exactly, guys. That's the watch I want you to Google right now. Steve says, I didn't invent coffee. I just drink it. Exactly, guys. And guess what? I got a little blueberry muffin too. And I just got a sick haircut because I'm looking sharp. Um, Samuel says, it's Rolex's fault. I'm all the way Seiko. Hey man, I love me some Seiko and I love me some Rolex, but why, why did a company as prolific and as talented as Grand Seiko design their new 9F GMT with a really interesting movement to look like a Rolex Explorer too. Like Grand Seiko does, does not need to do that. It does not need to do that. Redskin says, I love you too, Jory, but do love my amphibia. Hey man, there's room, there's room for the both of us. All right. You can love your, your amphibia, but if you love me, then I'm happy. Um, Tim Lara says, you're right. The case and bezel totally do. Yeah, dude, it looks like, it looks like a freaking, Rolex Explorer 2, man. Hazlitt says, real men drink pump pumpkin spice lattes from Starbucks. Oh my God. Tis the season. 
break out your Ugg boots. It's time for the pumpkin spice lattes. Um, the bird on watches. Okay, the bird on watches is the man, by the way. He's been uh, watching my, my episodes for a while. He writes, I gave up coffee a year ago. Now it's due in the morning. <laughs> Hell yeah, dude. Crack open a Mountain Dew and just pound it. That'll wake you up. Lauren says, I really like the new Grand Seiko. Hey, man, let me know why. Let me know why. I, uh, Tom Roman, I really like that blue dial one, though. Sorry. No, here's the thing. It's a handsome watch. It looks like a very refined, nice watch. But you know what also looks like a really nice, refined watch? The Rolex Explorer 2. And they look exactly the same. All I'm saying, it's not an ugly watch. It's not a hideous or offensive watch. What is offensive about it is the fact that Grand Seiko is striving right now. They're making a big push to, to broaden and increase their brand equity by opening up a boutique here in Beverly Hills um, and, you know, really pushing on social media and, and, and trying to break into this mainstream. And they are so, so talented, guys. You know that. Most of my, my viewers will, will agree. Not all of them, but and that's fine, but most of them will agree. You know, Grand Seiko... They have better finishing than Rolex. <gasps> I said it, guys. I said it. They have better finishing than Rolex in most situations. Seriously, there's more man hours spent on a Grand Seiko than on a Rolex. So why do they have to... A company that talented, that has such pride and effort in their work, why do they have to go on and, and, and make a watch that just looks like a Rolex? It's It's... it's it, it, it's a letdown. It's a letdown. Hold on, guys. Puppy. Is that a poodle? Uh, Labradoodle. Oh, beautiful. Thank you. You guys smash that like button for that dog, please. Please, everybody, smash that like button. Helps me out a lot, by the way. Um, we got like 14, 15 likes right now. I want to see that go up. We got like 200 people in here right now. 20 likes. Come on, smash it, guys. Let's bring this up. I want to see 100 likes. I want to see 100 likes on this right now. 25, 33. Smash it, guys. Dude, if we get to 100, I don't know what I'm going to do. I'm going to scream Grand Seiko sucks at the top of my lungs if we get to 100 likes right now. Robert Bishop, Labradoodles rock. Spiel Meaner says... It's a $4,000 homage of the Rolex. Dude, I agree. And that's what bothers me. That's, <laughs> that's what bothers me the most. Jeffrey Wood. Love Grand Seiko because it's a sleeper brand. First of all, Jeffrey, I love you because you're an amazing viewer. Um, but, and I, and I agree with you. So, but, but again, like they're a sleeper company. Okay, that rules. But why, well, like, why do they have to make an homage of another watch? Valen says, $4,000 for that dog. <laughs> T pose. Oh my God. Yo. Addison, if we get to 100 likes right now, I will T pose right here on this park bench. Are you guys ready? We have 57 likes on this live stream. Get me to 100 likes and I will T pose to assert my force on Grant Seiko so that they know they, they need to stop making an homage of the Rolex. Yeah, Kenneth, it's half the price of the Rolex. Yeah, that's true. And honestly, it's probably a way better watch than the Rolex Explorer 2, but it looks exactly like the Rolex Explorer 2. And Grand Seiko is more than capable of making a watch that is not only functions better than the Rolex, but looks different than the Rolex. Okay, so this thing's going on right here where uh, like the straw just won't go in straight and it's like freaking me out right now this is the definition of a first world problem what the heck is going on here can you just stay straight thank you geez louise god things just aren't going my way today i'm just kidding grand seiko despacito is edition uh i'm waiting for the despacito 2 edition to come out actually so um 
Nerf says T pose and say Grand Seiko sucks. Yeah, we're at 72 likes right now. If we get 70, uh, 100 likes in this live stream right now, I will T pose and say that Grand Seiko sucks. Um, Phelan says LOL. I'm, I'm moving up in the comment section because I don't want to miss some of these. The reference number SBGN001 is seriously gorgeous and the yellow accents are beautiful. Yeah, the, the yellow accent, that's, that's the limited edition one. That's the one that's 3,700 euros. So the one, the, the base one, the base model one, that is 3,200 euros, that's like $3,700. But the 001, the yellow one, is the limited one and that's 3,700 euros. So that's even more expensive in uh, US currency. Um, Stefan, what's the most you'd pay for a quartz watch? It's hard to say, man. Like, honestly, I would pay $4,000 USD for a 9F with a really unique uh, GMT move, uh, complication like, like this. The issue is that I would not pay $4,000 for an Explorer 2 homage. I, I just wouldn't. I would not. Like, I've, I'm, not, I'm not trying to, like, brag, because I say this a lot. This, this is my most expensive quartz watch currently. Seiko Tuna SBBN 031. This was, like, $1,300. Now, for a quartz watch, is that a lot of money? Yeah, I mean, for any watch, that, that, that's a decent amount of money to drop on it. But the value is there because I know this watch is... is <laughs> tough as nails and I don't have to worry about it and this is like the ultimate tool watch in my collection um so it's so it's like um the the, the value was there to me now to get a 9f quartz watch for four thousand dollars I think that's very interesting and, and and very impressive as well but it looks like a Rolex Explorer 2 and I'm not willing I'm not willing to do that I'm not willing to do that at all Renee, did I miss something? Talking about watches without the watch? So show us the watch you're talking about. Um, Renee, hey, I just made a video um, about that type of comment. You don't need to have the watch to have an opinion on it. This is a watch rant where I talk about these things. I talk about these opinions. Um, and if you have an issue with that, then you can go to a boutique and look at that Grand Seiko yourself. I'm not reviewing it. I'm telling you why I would never be interested in buying it. Um, because people are allowed to have opinions about things before they buy them. That's typically how they come to the conclusion uh, and decision to buy something. You typically have an opinion about something before you buy it. Um, like for instance, I have a very good opinion about Vietnamese coffee on Saturday mornings and that's why I bought it. Gabriel, do I think the Shogun is a Submariner homage. Um, it's the closest, it, it's one of, Seiko did make in the 90s a Submariner homage. I forgot the reference number. Um, I believe it had a 7S26 movement in it. The Shogun comes very close. Yes, it does. Uh, a really good watch, but for a um, Seiko diver, I kind of want that four o'clock crown position. That's just very uniquely Seiko. I mean, nowadays, a lot of companies, Sin and all these other companies are doing four o'clock crowns, but come on, Seiko started it, man. Um, Sean, not for the price of 4K, I wouldn't buy it if it looks like an homage. Google SBGN003. It looks like an homage. I, I agree with you, Sean. Um, Kaiser, it really does look like an Explorer too. I just wonder why. Man, that's the... That's the question, dude. Um, that is, that is a question. SKX031 is the sub. Palmetto Patina, you are the man. Is that the two-tone? Is that the two-tone that, that I'm thinking of? Please respond. SKX031. Um, I believe that's the two-tone. Uh, sub homage with a three o'clock crown. Spiel says the design team at Grand Seiko was lazy. Kind of seems like it, dude. Which is mind blowing to me because, again, the GMT complication on that 9F movement is wild. 
and the, and the refinement on that watch is wild. Super impressive. So wh- wh- why did they, like, why did they make it look like an Explorer 2? I just, I don't, I don't know. And, uh, and Gabriel says, um, I agree that, uh, that was my first impression as well. Looks just like an Explorer 2. Yeah. I got all these notifications about Grand Seiko coming out with this new uh, 9F Quartz GMT. And I was like, dang, and I started reading about it. And I was like, dang, and then I looked at the pictures and I was like, dang, that's a bummer. Look at this cutie, aw. This is why I like sitting here in the mornings because there's always puppies walking around. Very, very cute, love dogs. Um, Are all diver watches just Submariner homages? No, 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 no. I, I absolutely disagree. I think I spoke about, I think I made a video where I mentioned this. Um, first of all, technically, the Blanc Pond 50 Fathoms came out at least, at least six months before the Rolex Submariner. Um, now, what do dive watches all have in common? Well, the typical aesthetic is a rotating bezel. Let's look at this watch is a rotating bezel and uh, stainless steel and some type of increased water resistance rating uh, and a threaded crown. Obviously that goes uh, in the, in, in the category of, of a water resistance rating. Now the Blanc Pond 50 Fathoms had, ugh, there's a fly on my hand, um, had a rotating bezel and an increased water resistance rating and the Rolex Submariner uh, in 1950 to 1953 also had a rotating bezel and increased water resistance rating. Now, they may be, those two watches back in the early 50s may have been the first dedicated watches to kind of begin the prolific um, genre, if you will, of, of what is a dive watch, right? They may have been the first dive watches, but To say that every dive watch after that is just an homage to them, that's like saying every watch ever is just an homage to the first watch that was ever made. Um, No, I think they all have, I I think they're very, very different. And yeah, it may take an an enthusiast's eye. I hate that. Uh, It may take, I'm an expert. No, I'm not. Um, You may need to be an enthusiast, someone that's really interested in looking at these things to to see the nuances of of the differences between, you know, an SKX and a Submariner. Um, To a layman, to someone that doesn't really care (coughs) about watches, they probably think every watch looks quite similar. But to people that are interested, you start seeing the nuances, you start seeing the differences, and you really gain an appreciation um, for the differences in, in, in watches, right? Um, I hope that answered your question, uh, kind of a long-winded statement there, but let me know if that made sense to you. Guys, we are at 84 likes. If we get 100 likes, I'm going to T-pose. Oh, I almost did it. I almost did it. Uh, only the bezel is the same. Everything else, the hands indexes are different, right? Yeah, um, that, that's what I'm saying. You, you, you got to look at everything, right? Like, um, someone wrote to me asking why the SKX isn't an homage of the Submariner. Well, look at the indexes, look at the hands, look at the crown placement, look at the bezel. Very, 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 very different. Now, again, to someone who doesn't really care or know about watches, they may look at it and be like, eh, it doesn't look that different. It looks very, very similar. But to people that, you know, pay attention and, and care about the intricacies of, of watches, they would be able to tell the difference. It's kind of like people that... that, that don't know or care about art, right? Like I don't know much about um, like paintings and, and, and I'm, I, I like it, I enjoy it. But if you show me some of these abstract things um, like these Picassos or whatever, uh, and you show me a bunch of abstract paintings that are very, very famous, I would look at them and no offense to any um, art aficionados, I would look at all those abstract paintings and kind of they kind of all look very similar to me, but it's because I don't have the palette. I don't have the understanding um, of, of that. Um, but just like the bird on watches says right now, watchmaking is an art, right? Watches are artwork to us. So we start seeing the differences and nuances and we start gaining that appreciation. Um, just like cars, 
a lot of people, like my sisters don't really care about cars. My girlfriend doesn't really care about cars. Um, but me, I'm a huge car guy. So when I see all these different cars, I mean, I look at different model years of 911s and I'm like, oh my God, you see how the back slants this way, but then it's a little bit different. But to other people, it's just like, dude, it's a car. Who cares? But to me, it's art and I appreciate it. Um, sorry, kind of off topic, but well, no, it's actually on topic. You know why? Because us as watch enthusiasts, we look at that new Grand Seiko and we see all the little intricacies and we're like, yo, that's a Rolex Explorer too. And I don't appreciate that. And we are at 99 likes and we are almost at a hundred likes. And if we get a hundred likes, I will T-pose and assert my dominance. Oh my God, we're at 101 likes. Here we go, guys. Here we go, guys. I just want everybody to understand these people and all these people. I'm not gonna bother these people here. Uh, I'll bother these people. Actually, you know what? These people can get it too. T-pose. Grand Seiko sucks, all right? That was for you guys. Grand Seiko, I hope you're listening. I hope you're listening. Do you, do you guys, <laughs> minor, I'm calling the police. <laughs> uh, hope you don't get shot. No, I'm in a very nice neighborhood. Jeffrey, Jeffrey Wood says, nice. <laughs> um, I'm going to, I'm going to move up in the comment section because during that little, uh, little rant, I, I missed some of the comments, guys. I'm sorry. The Grand Seiko looks better than the Rolex Explorer too. Um, the Explorer, the Rolex's bezel is, looks thicker. Yeah, that's true. That's very, very true. Um, I'm sure there are differences. And to be honest, I told you, I think the, the Grand Seiko GMT 9F that just came out right now is probably a much better watch. I know, that's blasphemy. Grand Seikos are better than Rolexes when it comes to finishing and attention to detail. And that's not because I'm a Seiko fanboy. I am a Seiko fanboy, but that's not why. I'm also a Rolex fanboy, guys, geez. But I can be honest. Um, SoCal says thicker, like your sweet beard. Yo, this beard is thick, boy. Woo. Um, Brian says, I'm not liking the yellow accents. Definitely looks like the Rolex Explorer too. Um, I do like the red accent version. Yeah, I like all the different accents. I like all the colors, but it doesn't matter when the bezel and the GMT hand the Arabic's on the bezel, it looks exactly like a Rolex Explorer 2. Let's, I mean, come on. The thing that would suck, the, the, the reason this bothers me, okay, is because if you get the, the 9F, all right, and, and don't watch, don't collect watches for anybody else. Don't wear watches for anybody else. Don't worry about what other people think. But at the same time, this is what would bother me. I'm being um, a little bit honest here. If I picked up this new 9F uh, quartz from, from Grand Seiko and I put it on and I went out to a function or whatever, especially around other watch enthusiasts, they would look at my wrist and they would be like, hey, Rolex Explorer 2, sick, I have one too. That's sick, dude, Rolex Explorer 2. And then I'd have to spend time being like, oh, <laughs> no, actually, this is, the, this is the new Grand Seiko 9F quartz. And then, then they'd be like, oh, cool, Grand Seiko rules, awesome. But I don't want to have to spend that time explaining that my Grand Seiko is not the Rolex Explorer 2. Not because one's better than the other, or not because I feel inferior that it's not Rolex, because to be honest, I mean, let's be honest, Grand Seiko's better. I just don't want to have to have it be, be like, oh, no, 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 this is, this, this is actually the, the new Grand Seiko. It's not the Rolex Explorer 2. It's like, come on, Grand Seiko, you're so good. You're, like, you're so good at what you do. Make, just make it look different. How much would you be willing to pay for an Alpinist with Grand Seiko movement and finishing? <laughs> that depends, man. That depends. But, like, I, I, I need to see what is in it and, and, and like, what it does. <clears throat> if it had the 9S movement with the threaded crown 
and um, 200 meter water resistance rating and sapphire crystal. Um, I could see that being like a, a $4,600 watch because that's kind of what the, the GMT, the SBGM 221 or whatever, I, that, that's the wrong reference number, but um, the, the new cream dial Grand Seiko GMT, that's like a $4,600 watch. And I feel like that Alpinist would be in the same, has the 9S automatic movement, has the Grand Seiko finishing. Um, I, feel, I feel like it could be around that or maybe, because he, here in the US, the uh, new Snowflake spring drive is like a, a 52, I think you can get it for like $5,200. Really great value with that watch. Um, so I, I could see like an Alpinist, Grand Seiko Alpinist version going for a similar amount. Uh, Jilapuki says, what's your next watch? Good question, man. You guys are gonna have to wait. There's a lot on my list. There are a lot of watches on my list and just thinking about it gets my mouth watering. Always excited to buy a new watch because uh, I'm an addict. I'm an addict at this point. Um, sorry, let me, I'm, I'm gonna, uh, Christian M, do you, do you even bother to strike up conversations with guys wearing Rolexes? Um, I don't really know what that means because I'm a guy that wears Rolexes. Here's the thing, we, we, we gotta stop judging people for like, what they wear. Like for instance, when I make fun of Invicta and I do my whole character, I'm not saying that everybody that wears an Invicta is adult, is an idiot, because a lot of people that wear Invictas or that wore Invictas ended up learning more and, and buying a real watch. So you're, you're not a bad person if you wear an Invicta and I hate Invicta. Um, you just need to learn more. And, and I'm sick of the comment section being like, oh, uh, Rolex guys are jerks. Or like people that drive 911s are all idiots and, and mean. It's like, that's so stupid. I want a 911. I have multiple Rolexes in my collection. You guys know that. Minor Digger says, movement wear equals, equals dolt. Yeah, people that wear movement are, are stupid and I hate them. But everyone else, you can't judge them. I'm just kidding, I'm kidding, guys. You, let's stop judging people for the watches they wear, okay? I'm, I'm here to judge the watches and hopefully educate people so that maybe they, you know, spend their money on, on something of, of more value than wasting it on a movement watch or something. Um, for instance, like a movement, if you buy a, a $130 movement, uh, hello, you could get an Orient Bambino with a automatic in-house movement and, and really, really decent finishing. Um, Abdullah says, would you rather buy a Seiko 5 or an Orient? Um, is it going to blow your mind, guys? I'm not a huge Seiko 5, guys. I think, I think a lot of Seiko 5s are really good, and I recommend them. But between a Seiko 5 or, like, an Orient Defender, dude, get an Orient, man. I'm curious, uh, Stephen Hong says, I'm curious, what would you do if I walked up to you and said I'm a fan and had an Invicta or movement on my wrist? Would you call me out to be a liar or punch me in the face? First of all, I would not punch you in the face. Um, second of all, that wouldn't bother me. I, 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 I've had people do that, um, literally in that situation wearing an Invicta and that's fine. <laughs> I get a lot of people on my Instagram and like daily telling me, hey man, I actually really like this Invicta that I own and blah, 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 blah. And guess what? That doesn't make you a bad person. It just means we have different tastes in watches. That's totally cool. Just like when I said that real men drink black coffee, except on Saturdays when you drink Vietnamese coffee. I had people right now being like, oh, I guess I'm not a man then. I drink coffee with cream in it or whatever. Dude, that's fine. You're not a bad person. I'm joking around. We just have different tastes. But if you walk up to me wearing a movement, I will punch you in the face. I'm kidding. Um, T3, would you say 
that the Rolex sub is better than a comparable Grand Seiko diver? No, <laughs> I would not. It, it, it depends on, for instance, I have the 16800, uh, came out around 1983, my Submariner. Comment below if you've seen my Submariner videos, by the way, so you know which one I'm talking about. It's a vintage Submariner. Um, really great reference number. I love it. Amazing watch. I would not trade that for a comparable, excuse me, Grand Seiko Diver. I would not trade it. However, if we're looking at a modern Rolex versus, um, what's the reference number of the new titanium Grand Seiko Diver with the high beat movement and the uh, guilloche checkered dial, fully titanium? When the, Grand, when the Grand Seiko Boutique opened up on Rodeo Drive, it's like 30, like 30 minutes away from, from where I am right now. Um, I wore one. They literally took it out of a box, took the, the plastic off of it and put it on my wrist. It is the lightest watch ever. It is so light that you're like, uh, what? Like, am I wearing a watch right now? And it is so cool. And I would wear that over a, a new Submariner. So... Um, F all you all says time teller. Hey man, what do you think about um, sweatshops that are creating one one movements copying Rolex? First of all, sweatshops are disgusting, um, and it is a horrific reality that a lot of the products we use are unfortunately created in terrible environments. Um, so I don't like that. Also, Billy Bob wants a shout out. What up, Billy Bob? Um, so first of all, don't don't like the idea of that. Second of all, um, these one-to-one -one copies uh, are scary, and they're dumb. Now, now I feel like I am careful enough that I won't be tricked uh, about. I, I I wouldn't be tricked with one, not because I'm an expert, but because I'm probably not gonna buy a watch from you if I don't know you in the first place. Um but it is scary. For instance, Rolex um, replicas, fakes, saying replica is like a nice way of saying just a garbage fake, um, are getting incredibly, uh, ha, um, what's the word, not advanced. They're, they're, they're getting ridiculously realistic. But what's even scarier are the uh, Panerai fakes, okay? The fakes, the, the, the fake Panerais that are coming out right now are so um, realistic that even Panerai, and I have a story I'm going to bring up in a different show, uh, a different episode, even Panerai is having difficulty uh, differentiating between real and fake Panerais. That's how advanced these replicas are getting, and it is freaky. So when people write to me saying, hey, I found this Panerai, really good deal and it's like a, a private seller I get very very freaked out um, Big Pete's Pie says I was at a family restaurant the other day with my family noticed the busboy was wearing a Casino Royale glad to see he didn't grab some Invicta or Diesel watch yeah that is, that is pretty cool it's a cool watch Um, Dirty Rib says, I didn't know you went live. I'm sure the time has already been told. Yeah, but we're still conversing a little bit. I can tell time again. It's 1040. Let's get down to business. There, I told the time just for you, man. Nick says accurate. Yeah, that's the word I was looking for. Ziggy says, um... Counterfeit watches are coming very close to the original. Fernando, I know you like Panerai. Why? I do like Panerai. I have a Panerai. I have a Luminor Marina. You guys have seen that video. If not, it's one of the er very early videos. Um, I bought that at a boutique in Las Vegas. Um, and that, uh, so I know that's not fake. And that's when they decorated 
uh, they heavily decorated the, the movement. It has a hand wind movement and um, very, very nicely decorated with Panerai, Panerai, Panerai etched in the back. They stopped doing that on the modern sandwich dial versions and that made it that much easier for counterfeiters to recreate these. Such a stupid move by Panerai. Like, yeah, probably saved you guys some costs and overhead so that you didn't have to decorate all the movements like that, but you just made it like that much easier for someone to rip you off. Come on. So, so silly by Panerai. Bradley says, I can't watch your early videos without my ears bleeding. Great vids though. Um, well, yeah, dude, because I didn't know how... <laughs> I didn't know how important this channel was was gonna be for me. I didn't know, I couldn't anticipate um, the success of this channel. Like thanks, dude, seriously, I'm blessed. Thanks to you guys, you guys all rock and I love you. But my early videos, I was filming on a Nikon Coolpix. For real, I'm not lying. I had a tripod with this little Coolpix and I like had no external uh, mic port. And so my early videos were like, terrible and I apologize but guys remember I've only been on YouTube for 13 months can you guys like comprehend that right now I've only been on YouTube for 13 months all right you guys rock for bringing me here you guys I seriously each and every one of you that's watching me right now I don't care if you're live here or if you're watching this when this video uploads this is your channel, guys. This is, this is your channel. You guys rule. Jeffrey says, I liked your earlier videos. <laughs> Thanks, dude. Oh, Addison says, any T3 is a good T3. You rock, bro. Um, let me see. Greetings from Virginia. What's going on, Virginia? Is it still really, really humid over there? Been to Williamsburg with my family like twice. So cool, but really humid. But I'm from New Hampshire originally, so I'm, I'm used to that. I'm um, just looking at the comments here. Trinidad in the building. What's up, what's up, Kendall? Belgium. Orange County, what's going on? LA in the building. Just looking at the comment section right now, guys. I don't want to. I don't want to uh, exclude everyone. By the way, thank you so much for commenting and interacting with me, guys. This like, you guys seriously rule. Kaiser says, always appreciate the honesty. Thanks, T3. Well, thanks, man. This. Is this channel wouldn't be anything without honesty. Like, come on. Like, like the, the, seriously, I'm telling you just my honest opinions on these things. Nothing is like, like, oh, okay. What's up, DC? Qatar in the building. How are you, Qatar? Australia, down under. How you doing, man? Um, Ireland. What's going on, Ireland and Turkey? Uh, master cylinder, what equipment do you film on now? Well, right now I'm on my iPhone 10. Um, some of my Instagram pictures are using the iPhone 10. Um, a lot of them are taken with my Nikon D5500 uh, and I use a macro lens obviously to get really close up shots and everything. Uh, and I have a few external mics um, obviously I use the lapel mic, um, because it was convenient at the beginning, but now it's kind of like, I don't want to say it's my thing, but everybody talks about my beard. Everybody mentions like the glasses and the lapel mic. So that's kind of, I'm not gonna, I'm not, I ain't gonna stop doing it. Okay. Cause I love it. That's my brand. That's my thing. So I wear the, I wear the lapel mic cause it's funny. And everyone's like, you don't need that fuzzy thing unless it's windy. Yeah, I know, dude, but it's it's like I enjoy it. It's funny. So I use a lapel mic, um, and I have some um, external lighting so that it doesn't look too dark in the room. Also, though, uh, I don't really know what I'm doing at all. So 
that's why my videos aren't like incredible. I don't really, I don't really know what I'm doing, okay? Um, talk, let's talk about honesty. We're gonna talk about honesty. I have no clue. I have no clue what I'm doing ever. Um, but so I appreciate you guys acknowledging my honesty because here's the deal. Um, I got a comment on one of my videos. So with all the new subscribers, a thank you. I seriously appreciate it. You guys rule and I love each and every one of you. But with all these new subscribers, I get a ton of questions. And some of the questions I've brought up in older videos. So as I get better with videos and as I get new subscribers and as my thoughts develop, sometimes I reiterate, I make another video on the same watch or whatever if I have a thought about it. So for instance, a ton of these new subscribers and followers, if you don't follow me at The Simple Consultants, you should do so because that's my Instagram account and that's the easiest way to immediately write to me and I respond to everyone. The underscore simple underscore consultant. Follow me there. Um, a, bunch of, a bunch of new subscribers were asking me what my favorite dive watch under $500 was. And... Um, And I told them that uh, it's my Seiko Baby Tuna, SBBN 031, best dive watch under $500, seriously. Prices are increasing though as they become a little bit more scarce. Um, I got mine for 220 bucks, it, it, it's up in the mid 300s now. Um, but anyway, I made a video about that watch already and this person commented on that video, I made that video last week and they were like, uh, I'm, I'm getting a little Seiko'd out. Okay, I'm getting a little bit sick of the Seikos. And in my head, I read that comment because guys, I do read all the comments. And in my head, I was just laughing. I'm like, well, I don't know what to tell you. You guys ask me my opinions on what my favorite dive watch is under $500. I'm not gonna pick a watch that's not my favorite. You guys want my opinion on what's my favorite. I'm gonna tell you my honest opinion. And if it happens to be a Seiko, it happens to be a Seiko, but I'm not gonna pick another watch that's not my honest pick. So let's, I mean, Let me acknowledge the comment section. Ian, gotta go night night. Take care, bro. Taiwan, what's going on, Daniel? Uh, Nick says, that's what we like, the purity of the video's content and presentation. Well, thanks, dude, that means a ton to me. Um, I mean, I'm, I'm just looking at the... Fernando says, why no Twitch? Um, I don't stream on Twitch because I just, it's easier for me to stream on YouTube. Um, like, I don't know if I'd play a game on Twitch or something. That's not really my style right now. Um, but if you do want to see more of my day to day stuff and more stuff outside of watches and me, like my girlfriend was in my last video with me and we were talking, if you want to see more of that stuff, then subscribe to my new YouTube channel time away called Time Away. I just put up a new video, um, talked about how I got kicked in the head in jujitsu, um, and I was deadlifting 500 pounds. You wanna go see that, subscribe there. Um, also, my girlfriend and I, when we hit 50,000 subscribers here, my girlfriend and I are gonna do a uh, Q&A, and we're also going to do some live streams on the Time Away channel. So if you wanna see me more outside of the watch world, please subscribe to me over there. I think we have like 400 subscribers, not even, we're, we're under 400 subscribers. Um, I think we have 300. So, Nir, what's up Australia? How you doing, man? Glad you're here. So please go um, subscribe, time away. I'm literally gonna be making at least a video a week over there. And it's just more of my day to day because I wanna interact with you guys. Um, Brady says, you got 440 over there. Heck yeah, man, we broke 400 subscribers, thank you. I'm trying to, my goal for September, and it's September 1st, I wanna get 1,000 subscribers at the Time Away channel. Please guys, help me out. We're almost at 50,000 here at the Time Teller channel, and at the Time Away channel, I want to um, get to 1,000 in September. Um, and let me know. Uh, no name, okay, is your real job related to watches? I'm the time teller. 
I'm a business consultant, guys. Um, someone asked me, um, look, someone asked me a really interesting question. There's been a few interesting questions. Hold on, hold on, hold on. Uh, someone asked me if I could only wear one watch for a year, what would it be? Honestly, probably my Rolex 1500, my date. Um, that watch seems to just be very good at everything. Does that make sense? Like it has some provenance, if that matters to you. Has a threaded crown with a water resistance rating. Um, it can be dressy, but it can be sporty. I don't really have to baby it. It's got a date complication, which is my favorite complication. And uh, yeah, so if I only if I could only wear one watch for a year, um, that would probably be it. My Rolex date fifteen hundred. Jason says UK is also here. T three we rock. What's up UK? Um, some more questions. I'm just looking here. SGR Skull says, well, you don't respond to anyone. I DM'd you two times on Instagram. I just saw that it's red. Uh, DM me again, dude. I don't, I, uh, here's what you guys un have to understand. Don't take it personally. Again, I'm not bragging. I get hundreds, hundreds, guys, of people writing to me a day. So if I miss your question or, or, or comment to me, do not take it personally, guys. Like, please, don't. I'm very sorry. SGR, write to me again. I'll respond. Um, it's, it's, it's nothing personal. Um, I, like, was probably looking through all the, the messages responding, and, and, I, and I slipped up. It's my bad. I seriously do try to respond to everyone. Um, what is the new channel again? Trying to find it. Jeffrey, it's called Time Away. Tim Lara just told you. Uh, the reason I call it Time Away is because here, Time Teller Channel, got to take some time away from it and talk about other things. We can talk about watches over there too, but it's the other things like mindset and positivity and, you know, having fun and, and, and my girlfriend's input on things and my life. Because I get a ton of questions on how to stay positive, how, I, how I'm always upbeat, um, you know, people ask me business questions, what I do for a living. Uh, people ask me about my cars, my Jeep and my Z. People ask me about powerlifting. Um, all these awesome things that I'd love to talk to you about. But I don't want to talk about it here on the Time Teller channel because I don't think it's fair for the people that have subscribed here to, to just talk about watches. So please, guys, my goal for September is to get to a thousand subscribers over there because I'm seriously going to be making a ton of content. I, I, I love books. I love, love weightlifting. You guys know that. I love my girlfriend, obviously. And you guys have so many questions to her too. I get a ton of people writing, writing to me wanting to ask her stuff. And this is a way for us to all interact and just get even closer. Um, so yeah, time away. Brand new video I put up, I believe yesterday. And uh, Panama. Oscar was here. So please guys, I want a thousand subscribers in, in September. Do you talk about cars there? Nick asks, yeah. Talk about my Z, I talk about uh, my Jeep, talk about everything. SoCal Entourage says, Time Away is an awesome channel. Thanks man, you guys rock. Cowboy Swami says, you will get a thousand subscribers, bro. Thanks dude, you guys are awesome. Um, Big Pizza Pie says, yeah, be patient, guys. I've DM'd Jory on Instagram. He's answered me. Uh, Stephen Hong, how do I find your other channel? It's not coming up in my search. Okay, so on the home page of my channel, of, of, of the Time Teller channel, if you go to the About section, there's a link to my new channel. Also, in the description of my newest videos, um, there are links to uh, my new channel. So check it out over there, please. It's called Time Away. People are asking me for the SoCal Entourage. Thank you. Yeah, Time Away. I'm, re I'm reading the comments. Hold on, guys. Hold on. 
Christian, what qualifications would you have to consider a watch an heirloom to pass down? Any watch you like, bro. Any watch that means something to you. They're, 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 it doesn't matter if it's a Timex Weekender. If you wore it and you want to give it to your son, your son is going to love it. For instance, my dad, my dad uh, passed down his Certina DS2 Chrono Olympic to me. When he gave it to me, I knew very little about watches. Ends up that watch is actually inc incredibly orologically significant and very, very cool. I knew nothing about watches when he gave it to me. Um, but guess what? The fact that he gave it to me, I was like, wow, this is the coolest freaking watch in the world because it was my dad's. So, and guess what? When I give it to my kid, whenever, <laughs> whenever that happens, um, that's, that is an heirloom. So heirloom is what you make it, guys. It doesn't matter what the watch is. There, there are no qualifications. Um, yeah. SGR says, thanks for an honest response. Love from Latvia. Love you too, bro, man. Again, did not mean to, to I, I did not overlook your message to me. I, I get hundreds of people writing to me a day um, and, and I may have just missed it. It's my bad. Um, a few people, man, I, I don't want to, I want to remember who wrote to me. Um, Show Knight says, what are your thoughts on micro brands? I'm very, 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 very picky. I'm very picky about watches. Incredibly picky about watches. Um, sir, excuse me, sir. How do you feel about watches? Ugh. My co-host shows up late and then uh, doesn't say anything, a little bit camera shy. Um, I'm very, very picky about watches in general. And so when it comes to micro brands, I'm just as picky. And that's why I give you my honest opinions about micro brands that I've reviewed on the channel. Um, Pantor, for instance, the company, I've spoken about I think I've, 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 I've reviewed three of their watches. Never, never compensated, no relationship with that company whatsoever. Um, but what did I say in my reviews? I reviewed three of their watches. I said two of them I, do, I, I don't really recommend. If you like big chunky watches, maybe it's your thing. Um, really impressive specs, sapphire crystals, really high water resistance ratings, decent movements, kind of cheap looking hands. I said they're not for me, but but one of them, the Pantor Sea Lion. Seriously, that's a that's a watch like I would wear normally. That's a really cool watch. So what do I think of micro brands? You gotta judge them just like you would any other. Like, like for instance, would you buy a Rolex just because it said Rolex? No. Would you buy a Grand Seiko just because it said Grand Seiko? I hope not. And the point of this uh really long live stream. I'm having fun, so I'm going to keep it going. Are you guys having fun? Let me know. Um, I, 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 would, I would not buy a Grand Seiko just because it said Grand Seiko, because guess what? The newest Grand Seiko that just came out, the new GMT, it's, a, it's probably a really good watch. It is a Grand Seiko. I would not buy it. So with micro brands, you got to judge them from a watch to watch basis. Now, excuse me, I get a lot of questions about what um, micro brand in general is my favorite. I have zero relationship with any watch company, guys. Zero, zero, zero relationship with any watch company. But Boulder has made consistently impressive watches from what I've seen. I have two of them in my collection. I've taken the Odyssey Get back here. I've taken the Odyssey on vacation with me and I've taken my Boulder Expedition Everest on hikes and stuff and like trail rides in my Jeep. I actually trust those watches, really. They're really great watches. Um, so Boulder, no relationship with them whatsoever, um, but a really, a really impressive micro brand. What do you think of the new Dan Henry Sport Chrono Mecha Quartz? 
I know they look really nice, but I'm not a fan of Dan Henry guys. I'm not a huge Dan Henry guy. Um, it doesn't pique my interest. It doesn't really tickle me. So, no Dan Henry for Time Teller. Tim Lara, the fun is being had. Thank you. Adrian, lots of fun. Keep ranting. Will do. How will we celebrate 1 million subs? Oh my God, guys. If we get to 50,000, I will freak out. So 1 million? But I will get to 1 million. Okay? Trust me. Um, George Carroll, what's wrong with the Grand Seiko? Um, what is wrong with the Grand Seiko? It's that it looks like a Rolex Explorer too. Jeffrey, what is with the down votes? Are there down votes on this live stream? I don't know. I can't see them. I can only see the likes going up and the people that are here. Uh, I, dude, if you guys knew the vile comments and messages I get on a daily basis, the down votes would not surprise you. <laughs> because I get people daily telling me like the meanest stuff that I could not even repeat on camera because it would probably get my channel taken down. People are sometimes a little bit angry with me for some reason because I only talk about watches. Like, uh, I don't know. But yeah, so I'm sure there's a ton of downvotes. Also, also <coughs> excuse me, interestingly enough, um, the weirdest thing is I think some, I think I have like dedicated haters that are, are part of the notification gang. Because when I upload a video, within a second of me uploading, boop, I'll have a down vote. And it'll only be like one to three immediately. So there are people, get this, like try to understand this, this is crazy. There are people, oh, the sun's moving. There are people that hate me so much that they subscribe to my notifications just so they can hit that down vote the second a video uploads. It's hilarious, dude, because I'm not trying to brag, but like the likes to dislike ratio on most of my videos is incredibly positive. Okay. So I don't, and I don't even care about the down votes, but it's just so funny how they think like, <clears throat> I'm going to shut this channel down. I'm going to take them down by disliking it immediately. It's just so it's just so funny. But every time I see it, it gives me a little chuckle. So <laughs> Jeffrey says, I just don't get it. I'm sorry. You have to deal with it. Don't be sorry, dude. Look at me. I'm having a blast with you guys. You guys rock. Um, let's see. Ray says, Jory, you're a man of the people. <laughs> Thank you. Jello says, smartest beard on YouTube. Thanks, man. Nerf says, what's your thoughts on Despacito? Again, honestly, uh, more of a Despacito 2, guys. Oh, you haven't heard of Despacito 2? Sorry. Maybe someday. Um, Jerry says, you have 450 at time away. Yes! I didn't even know it was past 400. Guys, subscribe to the Time Away channel. Seriously, Time Away. It's my daily channel. Um, I don't upload daily, but it's more like daily con um, lifestyle, like daily type of content. So please, it's a whole lot of fun. Whoever subscribed to the Time Away channel, please chime in in the comment section. Let people know what it's like. Let people know if you're enjoying it and, and help get the word out. Let them know right now. Is, is the channel worth subscribing to? Um, I'm having a blast. It sounds like the people that are subscribed over there are having a blast. So um, let's get the word out. Again, trying to hit 1,000 subscribers on that channel in September. So let's get there. Jerry says, Connie cooked for Jory. It's true. She did. <laughs> she did cook for me. We had, uh, I'm a big meat eater. So she cooked me steak and I had some tilapia because I have a huge protein intake every day. Fernando, senpai don't notice me, feels bad, man. What's up, Fernando? I noticed you. All right, Fernando. 
Kirill says, haters gonna hate. Your positivity is infectious. Thanks, dude. It's so silly. We literally don't have time in life to, to like, be pissed off. But that's, that's stuff I talk about on time away. Like, we don't have time for that stuff. Okay? So just be happy, man. Big Pizza Pie says, I subscribe to Time Away. If you're a fan of Jory's content, then you will love the new channel. Thanks, man. Cowboy Swami says, it's a great time over there. Subscribe to it. Thanks, bro. <clears throat> Addison says, have you heard of Minecraft Cedo, also known as Despacito 3? First of all, Addison, I know you're lying because uh, Despacito 2.5 is actually the highest Despacito so far. Um, so unless you know something I don't, you're lying. But yeah, Despacito 2 is probably the best. Despacito 2.5, a little disappointed. Um, Jay Bolton, what's up, bro? Weather looks amazing there. It is super nice out. Um, just got here, Joe says. Hot topic today. What do you think of Chinese automatics? Valen. If no one hates you, then you're doing something wrong. Exactly, guys. You got it. Like, seriously. Um, there's a good question here. Hot topic today. So just to get back on topic, just for the people that are just joining us, because people are showing up and leaving, and then other people are showing up. Grand Seiko came out with a new... 9F GMT Quartz with an incredibly interesting GMT complication and a really good quartz movement that they've had since the 90s but that they've refined and they hand-picked the quartz crystals that go into it. An amazing watch. Better than anything else you could buy. What's the issue? The issue is that it looks exactly like a Rolex Explorer 2. It looks like a nicer, better version of the Rolex Explorer 2. And that's a problem with me. Is it worth buying a limited edition turtle? Oh, sorry guys. Um, only 3K made for $1,000? Which turtle are you talking about? Uh, I don't know. For every one hater you have, there are 50 appreciators. Heck yeah, guys. And that's what I love about you guys. You guys rule. Tim Lara, LAPD, there's a dog creeper in the park. Dude. Connie sleeps in. On Saturday, I go, I get my hair cut, have some Vietnamese coffee, and I creep on dogs in the park. Is that a problem? So sue me. Call the cops. Okay. Looking at the comment section. Real question is Sarbo 33 versus Explorer 1. Between those watches, uh, Explorer 1, I would choose. But the, but the price range is, is so incredibly different. But Explorer 1 actually has a threaded crown, huge water resistance rating. Like. Why do you think they didn't go with the spring drive on that watch? I think it probably had to do with the, with the GMT complication read about it really interesting gmt complication um still hyper regulated doesn't need the spring drive to to maintain regulation because it has hand picked quartz crystals in there hyper 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 regulated watch nice. carlo the song esposito i know what's with version 2.0 and 2.5. Well, if you don't know, I can't tell you, man. Sorry. Uh, I talk about it at the Time Away channel. If you want to learn more about Despacito 2, uh, you got to go to the Time Away channel. Subscribe. Subscribe to Time Away, and you will learn about Despacito 2. <laughs> this is ridiculous, by the way.
Jasper, why do you always yell so loud? <laughs> you must be new here. Um, I yell because I'm passionate, guys. But seriously, subscribe to the Time Away channel if you haven't. I'm looking at the comments. <laughs> Jeffrey, we need to wrap up so I can check out the Time Away channel. We're going to wrap up soon. I'm going to hit the road in a little bit. There's a secondhand sweeper tick. Um, it's not like a spring drive. Thoughts on sniper watches? Never heard of it, actually. Literally never heard of them. Do you think we will get a new Alpinist? Probably in the future. There might be something similar. Mark Klein. What's up, dude? Just wanted to say hi. Shimmerin. Is the missus not wondering where you are? She's sleeping in, actually, right now. I mean, she's probably awake right now, but she was sleeping in earlier when I went out, so I didn't wake her up. I just went out. She knows where I am. Median, hello from Germany. What's up, man? What's up, Germany? Looking to add a dress watch. What do you think about the Orient Open Heart Bambino? Love it. If you like open hearts, great watch. Check it out. Love from India. What's going on, man? I made a... Uh, let me see. Hold on. Philip asked me about that open heart. I made a video about top open heart watches. Um, I believe it was under $500 was the list. I don't remember, but t top five, it was top five open hearts. I know. And the Bambino was on the list, I believe. Um, it's not a Bambino though. It's the Orient. Oh my God. I forgot. It's an open heart. It's essentially a Bambino, but it goes by a different name. Orient Esteem. The Orient Esteem is uh, Orient's open heart. That is a really cool. Yes, Philip. The Esteem. Adrian Esteem. John Esteem. Thank you, thank you, thank you, guys. You guys rock. Yes, it's the Orient Esteem. Um, that one, check it out. It's on the list. Uh, Hamilton Jazz Master Open Heart, says Stephen Hong. Yeah, great watch. Not, not, not near $500, though. It's, it's, it's closer to 1000 it might be, you probably find one around closer to the $500 mark, but um, I own it. I own the Hamilton open heart. It's the only open heart I currently own. Russ, what's up, Philly? Um, but yeah, if you're into open hearts, you know, I'm not a huge open heart guy, but uh, check out the Hamilton. Great watch. Seriously, a great watch. Christian, who's your favorite watch collector? Me. Why don't they add an automatic feature to the Grand Seiko? Um, that would, they wouldn't, they would not. With the 9F movement? No, they would not add an automatic feature to that. Or uh, uh, atomic. Why don't they add an atomic feature, excuse me. They wouldn't add an atomic feature to the 9F movement. Nick, time away up to 458. All right, guys, I actually am going to hit the road because we've been here for 79 minutes. That's, this is the longest live stream I've ever done. Thank you so much for, um, thank you so much, guys, for, for joining me here. A lot of fun. Um, okay, so what did we go over? 
the new Grand Seiko 9F Quartz, incredibly impressive, incredibly refined, but looks too much like an Explorer 2, and that's a huge bummer. And I think uh, the price doesn't bother me, the fact that it's a Quartz doesn't bother me, but a company that's as impressive and as talented as Grand Seiko should not have done it. So guys, I'm gonna hit the road. Each and every one of you that have joined me today, I love you, thank you so much. Again, please guys, please, 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 subscribe to uh, the Time Away channel. Connie and I are gonna be doing a Q and A. Um, if you wanna talk to me about anything, watch related or no, you can follow me over there and we can talk about it. Um, you can follow me, write to me directly at The Simple Consultant on Instagram. I love you guys, seriously, each and every one of you. You guys freaking rock. Um, it's a long weekend here, just like Jeffrey said. Long weekend here in the US, uh, Labor Day. Um, so yeah, it's gonna be a really, really, really good time. Just gonna chill, hang out with my girl, and uh, kick back, make some content for you guys. So um, seriously, and if you don't think I read all your comments, even here, I'm gonna look back and look at the live comments. Um, I do, I seriously, because I appreciate each and every one of you and everything you've done for me in these past 13 months that I've been on YouTube. Man, you guys freaking rock. Um, I can't thank you enough. So uh, again, at The Simple Consultant on Instagram, time away, my new channel. Please, please, please subscribe to me over there. Want to get to 1,000 uh, in September. Redskins, peace, everyone, be safe. Yes, please. Please, please, please have a very safe weekend, guys, and enjoy it, and uh, have a good one. So, guys, I'm Jory Goodman, the time teller. Always remember, I didn't invent time. I just tell it. Love you guys.